What is the message that you are hoping to convey to the president and his administration? Yeah, we are clearly at an unprecedented time in our history with record unemployment and a, a transformation of the economy as digital tools take over more and more of the workforce that, uh, and, and the direction that we're setting. So the key thing we want to talk about today is strategies for ensuring that we do draw more people into the workforce, take advantage of work-based learning programs like apprenticeships, and really open the doors and more pathways for good paying jobs for more Americans. Barbara, you walk on, on factory floors, and I know Siemens has certainly been on the forefront of this in terms of implementing these new technologies, the industrial internet of things, robotics, et cetera, but you walk on factory floors, and they're very different than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. In terms of maybe the folks who are watching this program and wondering what kind of skill sets they need to have, what their children should expect, what do the manufacturing jobs of the future look like? Well, manufacturing is at a really exciting turning point because, you know, we always used to think of the uh, manufacturing workplace as something that was dark and dirty, maybe even dangerous. But in the future, and, as, and especially as we're making this transformation now, manufacturing jobs are a really brilliant combination of the physical skills of actually building things and the new automation, the, the integration of automation, and the ability to elevate the role of people in the overall creation of products and services. Hey, Barbara, it's John Ford. Good to see you again. Um, this group is, is tasked with helping to create a strategy to revamp the American workforce to better meet the challenges of the 21st century as it's written up. And I, I'm wondering, from your perspective, what are the policies that you want the executive branch and, and Congress to grapple with that will actually bring that about? What needs to change? Well, you know, as, as the board gets started working on this, we see really four major branches of work that need to be done. One is, the first is, is just helping people understand the additional pathways to careers that exist. You know, the, the past has said that uh, College education is critical for everyone, and where we're headed now is a, it's kind of a new approach that says there are multiple ways to enter the workforce. A second goal is to help make jobs more transparent so that people can understand where their current skills may apply in the future. A third is helping to revamp the way companies do their interviewing so that they can recruit and actually interview in more effective ways to make sure that we're really getting talent deployed to the right place. And then the fourth one, probably the one closest to my heart, is measuring and encouraging businesses to get involved in workforce training initiatives. You know, if we could start to look at these investments in workforce as critical investments in business and understand the return on that investment, we'll be able to really encourage more participation. Yeah, it's interesting. It's hard to divorce any of this from education, it seems. Uh, the Washington Post has a story out today about workers in, uh, at GM who are being laid off, and they interview some guys who were saying, look, I'm 47 years old, I didn't expect to be laid off, and I'm too old to go back to school. Uh, and that's a mindset you really have to break in this country especially, right? Oh, you're never too old to go back to school. In fact, at Siemens, what we're doing is we're really encouraging everyone to start to think about their digital readiness. And recently, I took my own self-assessment using our digital readiness checklist to find out how well prepared I am according to our analysis. And I'm happy to say I'm, I'm well prepared for the leadership role I have, but I even found some areas I can improve on. And, and I plan to take some of our guided learning that we're making available to all employees. Barbara, we've had really a mixed bag in terms of data recently here for the U.S. economy, including some softer than expected manufacturing data in the last couple of weeks. How would you assess the current business climate here in the U.S.? And I guess how would you compare that to the rest of the world? Oh, you know, the, the business climate is still very strong. And we have seen phenomenal growth in manufacturing for an unprecedented something like 100 straight months. I mean, this is, this is an important time for us in the economy. I understand the last report, yes, um, perhaps was a little lower in its growth figures. But, but what's happening right now is a true transformation across many industries. Everything from power to infrastructure to healthcare, et cetera, is going through change. And, and what we need to be able to do as a society is support our workforce through that change. 
Now, compare this and our approach to what goes on elsewhere in the world. We are a federal government with very strong states and local communities. And so what's great about the board that's convening today is we have representatives from the state and local level participating in the dialogue along with academia and business. It's going to take all of us working together to achieve our goals. Barbara, I want to go back to what you were saying about those four points, uh, which is really interesting, uh, and, and what government can do to support readiness along them. Are, are you suggesting that perhaps the, the way the government supports student loans or, or the, the kinds of tax breaks that it offers business could be uh, ways to move along further on those paths? Yeah, I think those are things we should look at. And, and in addition to that, let's think about the way grants are provided to students. What if Pell Grants could be provided for career technical education? These would be kind of landmark, you know, game-changing offers that would make it possible for people to pursue new goals. Barbara, we have a lot of trade talks afoot right now. Obviously, everything going on between the U.S. and China. You've got, uh, you know, tariffs that are in place. Now we've got what looks like is going to be increased talks with India and Turkey, talks going on with the EU, some of our Asian allies. How is that, how are you planning for that, those, uh, for those talks to turn out and how is it affecting investments that Siemens is making here in the U.S.? Yeah, well, first of all, Siemens in the U.S., we have about 50,000 people here. We've been in the U.S. for 160 years. Uh, so uh, we are a, a U.S. company serving the world. We're actually, what a lot of people don't know is we're actually a net exporter to the rest of the world. And we're huge proponents of open and fair trade with enforceable rules. We absolutely are supporting the, the, the successful negotiations uh, that we hope will be closing here shortly because the kind of business we're in depends on certainty. We're a large infrastructure company and the kind of work we pursue has planning cycles of 10 to 20 years. And we find that our stakeholders really need that kind of certainty to be able to make the investments that they need for their future. So uh, frankly, we think that we're in good position and looking forward to actually enhancing and increasing the amount of exporting that we do here from the US particularly in the area of power, because we have expertise in that arena. And frankly, there's a need for uh, additional power in several energy hungry regions of the world. And, and our engagement in that will be a huge contributor to global security and global economic development. Barbara, I'm glad you brought up power because obviously some of the news of the day today centers around one of Siemens' rivals, GE, and the fact that they expect more pain and power to persist over the coming years. How are you thinking about the opportunities in that sector? When, when you see issues going on with, with a rival like that, is that something that Siemens is benefiting from or is that something that, that creates pain for your company as well, given the fact that it has led to things like an inventory glut? Well, there's no secret that the power market is going through a massive transformation right now. And all of the companies engaged in serving this market have had to refocus and, and adjust their strategies. Now, we began that adjustment five years ago. So Siemens has been a leader in large power, and we continue to be. But we've also made real investments in renewable power, small scale distributed power, and in transmission and distribution. So overall, we are performing well, but you know, our hearts go out to all of our colleagues in this marketplace. It's very, very challenging.